Good evening folks, um, tonight's video is going to be a surface mount soldering tutorial um, I did say I was going to do uh, a few of these uh, in my channel update video uh, last week And yeah, tonight's going to be the, the first of these um, This is uh, sold by uh, a seller on AliExpress, just 35 pence in clean delivery to UK um, Now this is uh, described as a flowing water um, LED kit And as you can see it's got uh, 10 through hole resistors uh, There's also a through hole pot there but everything else is uh, surface mount. We've got 12 resistors, a couple of caps, 4017 and 555, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, so yeah, I thought we'll take a look at the um, tools we're going to use in the consumables and then reconfigure the uh, camera setup uh, to give you a better uh, close-up of that uh, and showing you the process of uh, reflow soldering um, a surface mount kit. So the tools we're going to use this evening, um, I didn't show this in my workbench video last night but this is an Aten or Aten 858D plus, I'm pretty sure this is a clone um, but what is it, it's one of these uh, hot air or heat gun type things um, if you want to call that in layman's terms. Um, it's got variable uh, fan control you know for the how fast you want the airflow and obviously we can um, adjust the temperature temperature of it as you, as you would expect. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to use to, to reflow the solder. Um, of course, we're going to need some tweezers. Those are the ceramic ones I was telling you about last night that I couldn't find. Um, but the actual solder itself is the important thing about this video. Uh, we're not going to be using you know your standard sort of reels of solder. We're going to be using solder paste. And for those of you that don't know what solder paste is, and again, I appreciate um, some of you are maybe teaching to teaching you to suck eggs, uh, but for the guys that uh, guys and girls, I should say that, that don't know what solder paste is, uh, solder paste is basically a suspension of tin and lead in a, a sort of flux um, sort of paste, if you like, um, and what it does is um, it's a combined, you know combined paste that comes out everything's in it that you need to make uh, a solder joint so the flux is there to clean uh, the joint and help the solder flow and obviously you've got your tin and lead there that alloy that when heated up it will melt and it's uh, come together and flow into your joint to, to make it uh, you know nice and sound uh, and a nice electrical connection um, you can get this very cheaply um, off AliExpress um, now this uh, I got a couple of these um, two delivered for six pounds and you know they appear only to be about half full but that's quite deceptive you will be able to do you know you'd probably be able to do a, well maybe I don't know a hundred or so boards with these two maybe even slightly more um, but um, yeah it, it is what it is it's cheap so the paste uh, far cheaper than you can get it in the UK and um, it does stay on here as you can see uh, store in a cool place between 0 and 10 degrees so your average workshop uh, should be cool enough I wouldn't recommend keeping it in the fridge although some people do suggest you keep it in the fridge but certainly I will not be putting it in the fridge with my child's or children's food and, and drinks and stuff like that if you're going to keep it in the fridge I suggest you get one uh, purely for your workshop and of course you could probably keep some beers or something in there as well for when the wife's away um, now these do come with uh, needles if you like um, these are quite a uh, quite a large diameter probably about one and a half millimeter something like that maybe even a couple of millimeters um, and I thought looking at the diameter and look at the picture some of these uh, packages um, I thought this might be quite big but I'm, I think it might be okay but I did initially try um, cutting down a, a proper hypodermic uh, needle. Uh, I just used uh, the Dremel with a diamond cut off wheel to, to trim it to size. Um, and it's the paste is just a little bit too thick to, to come through the, the needle itself. So we'll go with the ones that are supplied. Um, I have ordered a, a package, funnily enough, from AliExpress of various sized uh, needles just to get one that suits uh, suits my needs a bit better but we'll, we'll give this a go and see how it performs now you will notice that they don't have a plunger um, now the reason for that is these are generally used in industry as part of a dispenser gun so this is essentially a, a solda paste cartridge that goes in a dispenser gun and you pull the trigger and it measures a pre a preset amount of uh, paste out you know it dispenses a preset amount of paste onto your, your board uh, so we're going to sort of cuff it tonight um, and I've got a couple of syringes here. Um, 
this one's manufactured by BD, whoever that is. In fact, they're both BD. Uh, this one has got like a rubber bung in it, a rubber seal. Um, this one is purely just a plastic, just a friction fit. And if I pull the plungers out, those, we can see that the one with the rubber bung is fairly loose. So I don't know if you saw it on camera. But the plastic one here is a nice fit. In fact, you can see as I push it down, it's actually pushing the... the other plunger in there down as well so that's quite a good fit um what we might do actually is maybe put a little nick in that just to get rid of that air air gap because obviously that's going to make it a bit springy if you know what i mean um so yeah that's pretty much what we're going to use uh let's see i don't know if i showed you these already but uh tweezers as well obviously to lift the components on so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to stop the camera uh, i'm going to reconfigure um reconfigure it i'm probably going to use the cheap aliexpress bore scope like i showed you last night in fact here it's here um and we'll just use it in the helping hands on the board here um obviously use something that you don't mind if it gets burnt because you are going to be using hot air um and yeah we'll see how how the kit build goes so if you bear with me two minutes i'll get this set up see you in a moment Right folks, welcome back. Right, that's the uh, bore scope set up and I've positioned the uh, camera over the top of the board and taped it down with Kapton. So now it's just a case of applying the solder paste itself onto the pads. Now, it's best to do it as, it's, I don't have much clearance here so this might get messy, but try and get your uh, syringes vertical to the board as you can. And just pipe a very, just like icing a cake, a pipe and icing on a cake. Just a very small amount directly onto the pad. Um, and don't worry about too much excess. Um, you don't need to worry about that at all. Because the uh, surface tension uh, should, you know, suck the solder into the joint. And bear in mind that a lot of the, um, a lot of the volume of this paste is flux and other stuff that's going to, essentially evaporate when you uh when you reflow it so i just uh had a bit too much on there as you saw i just wiped that off so let's go back in there see it's very difficult just due to the clearance of this uh, camera So I'll do this in real time, I'm not going to stop the video, um, it would make more sense just so you can see it from start to finish. So that's the resistors done, I see there's maybe a couple, um, if I just get a lead here, just to show you, this one here is probably a bit too much, maybe too much there, but not to worry, um, it'll, all be, it'll all be good. Um, and what we'll do now, I think, is probably do the uh, semiconductors just to get that out of the way. And I'll probably just pause the video. Uh, so when you're doing this, you just want to put a, a fine bead, as fine as you can, uh, along all the pads. Again, don't worry if you get too much on there. And don't worry about it branching the pads. Because the solder mask will do its job and prevent any shorts. And if you do get a short, don't worry about it because we can take... Uh, tidy that up with the 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 solder iron afterwards so we need to just get a little bit on there not too little not too much that's too much <laughs> just scrape a bit of that off yeah that's uh, probably a little bit too much in the bottom there but um, we'll, we'll, we'll make do with that in a second on to the 555 then again same thing a small thin bead as thin as we can does help to have a little bit of cloth next to you um, just to wipe the, the needle as it gets uh, clogged up if you like and then we'll finish these pads here and 
like so. And this last one, which you probably can't see because it's just off camera. And that's us done. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stop. Uh, I'm going to tidy this up because clearly I've got too much here. Um, and then we'll we'll go ahead and, and we'll put the components on. So if you bear with me, I'll be back in a second. Okay, folks, welcome back. Right, now what we're going to do is actually put the components on the board. So we're going to start off with the um, 4017 here. So I'll just uh, take the... Um, chip out its carrier tape I know you can't see this again but I'll just tip it out um, orientate it as best we can now I'm going to do this left handed which probably isn't advisable but um, we'll just bring this into shot and then we're just going to plop it, plump, uh, plop it down on top of the paste like so and have it roughly aligned it's not critical the alignment of these components because they will uh, as i said with surface tension they should um stay in the required place so just move down to the side here and we'll do the same with the 555 just taking care the orientation again just roughly position it and uh, surface tension should do the rest of the work okay right so uh, next thing to put on is the resistors so the, the mat on the board these are all 1k's as you can see here probably just make out now surface mount resistors if you if you're not aware are usually marked with a number in this case, one zero two. Now, what that means is, is one zero, and then the two is the amount of zeros after the first two digits. So one zero 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 uh, means it's a thousand, which obviously means it's one k. So we will just uh, peel the carrier tape off again. I appreciate you can't see this; it's off camera, but. Um, We'll quickly do it just to save time. So I'm going to pick up my little 102s here, and they are quite small. And I'm just going to plop them on the paste. Now that's a bit jaunty. Remember, surface tension that will fix the job. Another one, in fact I don't care about them being, if they're upside down or not. <laughs> there we go. Nearly there, three to go. The rest of them are all upside down. In theory, it shouldn't matter if they're upside down either, but so it's at least a little bit sort of, uh, standardised. We'll make sure they're all black side up. Sorry, appreciate you probably didn't see those last ones going on. Here we go, this is the last one. I pop that on there like so. Okay, next thing we're going to put on is our caps. Uh, we've got two of these to go on. For some reason they sent four. But don't throw those out, just uh, stick them in the parts bin. Right on them what you, what they are. and You know, so if you ever need them again in the future... You can uh, you can dig them out and, and use them. Those are caps. So then we've got a 10k and a 2k. So thinking about our uh, numbering system before, a 2k should be a 20, uh, 202. So 202. And 
just tip that out. 202, there's our 2k there. And last but not least, our uh, 10k, which of course should be 103. As you can see, 103. 10 zero and three zeros. 10k. Okay, so this is us ready to go. Last component's gone on. We're now going to reflow it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our hot air gun. Just going to take it out just now. Um, let it come up to temperature. I'm going to put it on a fairly low heat setting because I don't want to disturb the components. Um, but all we're going to do is uh, now heat up the uh, devices and solder paste gently whilst keeping the, uh, keeping the uh, air moving around the entire board and what that's going to do is going to gently bring the board up to temperature get everything equalized um, and then melt the the solder the you know the solder particles that are held within that suspension now, as you can see, the solder's actually start to spread out now. The paste start to spread out. Uh, and that's a good thing. And it should change it to a sort of lighter colour. And then, once it's at the, the full temperature, we'll actually start to see that solder melt. And uh, everything's sort of fall into place. And you should be able to see that happening sort of fairly quickly once it gets up to temperature. There we go. So everything's been pulled into place there. There's a 555 gone. I think let's move the camera across now. Hopefully we should see the 4017 go. There's the resistors going. And you saw that one just popped off, so just grab it if you can before it does that. And that's us. So, I'll let that cool down for a moment and then I'll restart the video. So just bear with me. Okay folks, welcome back yet again. So, um, that's the board cooled down. So we'll just take it off, uh, take it off our workbench and have a look at it. Now we can see there is a shot there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, grab my iron and uh, using the tip of the iron, just uh, drag down between the leads. Obviously, let it heat up first slightly. And I'm using my tiny little uh, TI or T1 bit here just because uh, of the fine pitch of the uh, package. I'll just pop it down there. There we go, that's it going. And yeah, we can just uh, make sure that's heated up and just drag it out there. Like so. Uh, we've got another uh, shot just down here, as you can see. Just in between those two legs there. Now we'll just heat it up. And there you go. It just uh,
And there we go, that should do it. Okie dokes. Right, so that's us all tickety-boo. Uh, what I'll do now is I will just uh, pause the video yet again. Uh, and then I'll put all the through hole components and we'll test the board. So if you bear with me, I'll catch you in just a moment. Okay, folks, uh, welcome back. Right, that's me, um, what do you call it, uh, put the LEDs on and a little pot there. Now, I did have a bit of a drama down here on the 555. I haven't cleaned this up yet, but uh, there was a shot in here. I thought I got it um, uh, cleaned out in the first part of the video, uh, but it, it was proved quite difficult. So what I had to use was... Uh, get my flux pen on there, get plenty of flux on there, a little bit of solder wick, wick it out and uh, it seems to be um, seems to be okay. So the next thing or the last thing to do is to put some uh, wire in here and we'll hook it up to the power supply. So um, I've got a couple of bits of wire pre-tinned here. I haven't got any red handy so I'm just using a bit of yellow so apologies for that. But uh, yellow is the positive side. We'll just uh, just solder those in. Like so. Trim the excess off. And I suppose the last thing to do is see if it works and if we did a good enough job. Uh, so I've set this to uh, three and a half volts. That should be enough. And we'll hook it up and see what it does. There we go. Working uh, working kit. Uh, now presumably this adjusts the speed. I don't have my just a handy bit. There we go. Let's see how slow we can get that down to. Ah, dear me. This is not going well, this video. Not as well as I thought it would go. <laughs> Never mind, I should have prepared. Prior preparation and all that. So there we go, there's its fastest speed, all the way down to its slowest speed. And yes, I am using a needle file, don't do this at home. <laughs> um, right, there we go guys, that is our little surface mount uh, tutorial complete. Um, having a look around the board, um, I'm relatively happy with the joints here, certainly on this side, they've actually come up nice and shiny. Um, and certainly this side as well, you can see it's quite a nice joint. Uh, I'll be totally honest with you, um, there is too much solder on these uh, resistors. As you can see, this one isn't flush the board, nor is that one. There was a little bit too much paste on there. Uh, but um, I'll level with you, this is the first time I have ever used solder paste. Uh, this is the first time I've ever used it. It's the first time I've ever uh, reflowed using hot air uh, solder paste. So uh, for a first attempt... Um, you know, I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, that gives me a benchmark to work on. <clears throat> and hopefully the next kit I do with you guys um, is going to be much, much better. Um, and I suppose I should really thank uh, all the other uh, electronics uh, hobbyists on YouTube that have done videos on, uh, you know, reflow and solder. Um, because that's how I've learned how to do that tonight. Just watching a few YouTube videos has helped me uh, to do that uh, and then show that to you tonight if that even made sense but certainly let us see for next time less solder paste um less is definitely more hope you found that useful guys and interesting or may may have inspired you to to try doing a bit of surface mount soldering it's not difficult um you know just give it a give it a go uh, if you enjoyed it let us see please like and subscribe and until next time all the best take care